FMTRS, I'm going to talk about all different parts of getting a full retrofit kit. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is the projectors. It's obviously the main component in the kit. So uh, you'll have two boxes, obviously a pair of that. In this case, we've got the FXR 3.0 by Xenons. Um, with every projector that's a by Xenon, there'll be wires coming out the bottom. Uh, you'll always want to make sure that when you mount them, this solenoid is on the bottom. Uh, another key feature to the projectors is obviously the bulb holder. This is where you're going to put the bulbs in. Uh, most commonly either D2S or H1s, in this case D2S. So they have these little clips here, put the bulb in from the back, uh, return wire down. Um, another thing with the projectors, if you're getting a bi-xenon, you'll always have this clip and these two rubber seals. Those are going to be installed on the ends, which are these two metal pins. Uh, basically that'll serve as the input for the bi-xenon solenoid, and that's what creates the high-low feature on the projectors. Uh, again, you'll only have that if it's a bi-xenon, so for low beam projector kits like a TSX or RX330, for example, uh, you won't have to worry about that bi xenon function in these wires. Second component that you're always going to get with the complete retrofit setup is a set of ballasts. Um, here we're looking at the Morimoto 3.5 FS ballast. Um, in each box, obviously, you'll have the ballast itself, some packaging. Um, this one, again, is made for D2S. It's got the P32D connector on it. Um, that's what this is, goes to the bulb. Uh, this is the input for the ballast, so this is going to go to the output from your wire harness over here. Um, along with the ballast kit, you're also going to have some mounting hardware like this, some mounting bracket that goes on the back, and uh, some screws for that. And uh, last thing, a lot of people are often confused by this part right here. Just a basic pigtail with two wires on the end and a 9006 connector on the other end. Uh, what this is is a test lead for the ballast. You're not actually going to use it in any final installation. Uh, it's just if you want to test fire the ballast with direct power from the car battery. Third component, obviously a set of bulbs. Um, again, D2S bulbs are supplied with this kit because the projectors, the FXRs, are using D2S bulbs. Um, always come in a box like this and uh, usually are protected in a plastic bulb cup. So to get these guys out, just wanted to safely remove from the cup, take all the packaging away, be left with the bulb itself. Um, again, this is the return wire that goes in to the projector, always facing the bottom. So you want to make sure of that when you're putting them in. It's also important to make sure that when you mount the bulb, it's mounted straight and not crooked uh, because that will have a negative effect on the light output. So I always have two bulbs. Uh, another important thing that comes with the kit is actually a set of alcohol wipes. And these you're going to want to use to clean the bulbs before you actually install them in uh, for the final time. Uh, that's going to make sure they're clean, uh, you know, free of any fingerprints, dust, you know, grease, dirt, anything like that basically ensures their lifespan, all that good stuff. To cover the projectors, uh, you will have selected a set of shrouds. Uh, here we're looking at the Apollo shrouds, uh, one of the more popular, it's a fully circular shroud, uh, covers the projector nicely. So this shroud obviously goes over the projector when you're actually putting it, putting it in the headlight. Um, they come with these centric rings, which are the adapter flange that goes in between the back side of the shroud and the front of the projector body. So these will snap into the back of the projector. Uh, you'll see that there's little uh, dimples and clips integrated into the centric ring and the back of the shroud. So you'll snap that in, snap it to the front of the projector, and that will serve as uh, the connection point. Uh, oftentimes, a lot of people don't use glue in between this because they tend to stay on with just friction alone. But we do recommend putting glue in between, uh, and that way, you know, road vibration, heat, and things like that. Uh, never you know vibrates the shrouds loose. Last major component that comes with every retrofit kit is going to be a wire harness. Uh, in this case we have the moto controlled by xenon harness. Uh, they always have these anodized boxes uh, be a different color depending on the application. Uh, this would be a low beam wire harness. Uh, it looks a little bit different. It actually has two independent relays. So you'd get these in the case if you had like a 9006 or an H7 for example. Uh, depending whether or not your kit is a by xenon setup uh, you would have these high beam splitters and you'll need these if you have a low beam harness and this will activate the bi-xenon solenoid on the projector. Um, if you have a bi-xenon kit, however, uh, the relay harness does all of that for you with the high-low, so you don't need the high beam splitters. A couple other optional things in the kits which you may or may not have selected would be angel eyes. Uh, this is the XB LED angel eyes, uh, which are real popular. Uh, we also carry a CCFL, which is a little bit more old school. Uh, the XB LEDs, uh, they come in a box like this. And uh, you have these, they have two rings inside. Uh, also another little note, uh, letting you know who inspected the LEDs and uh, just a couple bits of information about them. So with the XB LEDs, you have 
Uh, obviously the ring itself, which is going to mount to the front face of the shroud. Uh, we do have separate mounting instructions for that. Um, also with these you have a pigtail and the uh, LED driver. This is what supplies and regulates the power to the ring. Um, and these pins on the end are what you're going to supply power through, just positive and ground. So pretty easy setup on that. And the last thing, which you may or may not have gotten, would be the uh, resealing glue. It's pretty good for resealing the headlights. It comes in a roll like this. Um, you know, when you go to reseal the headlights, obviously you'll just unroll it and put it in between the channel uh, that, that separates the front and back half of the housing. Uh, a lot of times it's a little bit thick, so usually what we recommend doing, if that is the case, is just kind of stretching it out a little bit, and that'll make it just the right, you know, just the right thickness to fit in between the two halves of your housing. So that's always good for resealing the headlight. Not required in all cases, but helpful to have regardless.